This is not the man I met. He is egotistical. He disrespects me. This entire marriage has been forced upon me. When you don't have trust, when you don't have that foundation, the relationship is over before it starts. I'm at my breaking point. He has a problem with spending. You have champagne taste on a soda water budget. Yes, What's honey, going on? come on, champagne taste. <laughs> it's about the taste, not about the budget. You can't trust him anymore. The man that I married would never have done that. I'm not going to advise her to try to make this work because I think it's dangerous. I think it's gone beyond that. Here is today's case. She says after 11 years, she's ready to call it quits. She's tired of competing with other women. And the new love of his life? His cat, Ansem. Can their love withstand these obstacles? That's today's case on Divorce Court. Court is now in session. The Honorable Judge Faith Jenkins presiding. Your Honor, our virtual audience is filled with your super fans. Today's super fan of the day is Avis from Dallas, Texas. Avis, welcome to Divorce Court. We're so happy to have you with us. Your Honor, this is the case of Truth versus Duke. Thank you, Juan. <clears throat> Sharkeela Truth. Yes, Your Honor. You have brought Mr. A.J. Duke. Yes, Your Honor. To Divorce Court today. I understand that the two of you are currently engaged. Yes. But you are having a number of issues in your relationship. You have come to divorce court because you want to see if you can resolve them before you go forward in marriage so you don't end up back here later. Yes. Yes, Your Okay, Honor. I'll start with you, Miss Truth. Tell me what's happening. And right. make sure you tell me the truth today. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yes, of course. So we're here because of the trust issues that I have with AJ. Mm -hmm. At the beginning of our relationship, he struggled with um, cheating and whatnot. Mm -hmm. And if his actions don't meet his words, then we might have to postpone this wedding. The two of you have been together 11 years. Mm -hmm. What's happened now recently that's brought you to divorce court? Uh, he cheated on me two times, like within the last two years. How long have you been engaged? Uh, we got engaged October 31st, 2020. Okay, Mr. Duke, what do you have to yes, say? Yes, ma'am. At those two instances of me cheating were times where we were no longer together. I had called off our relationship, but not in the best way with my communication at that time. What has brought you to this point where you're in divorce court after proposing a year ago? The memory, the experience, the lingering feeling of what I had did in my past. Mm it does have consequences. Mm. From those consequences, I'm on my Herculean labors. I'm working, I'm striving to communicate. I'm pushing myself to every and all barriers that I can just to try to show her how much she truly means to me. Ms. Truth, Mr. Duke said that essentially, you haven't been able to leave the past in the past. So why don't you take me back and tell me what happened? I invaded his privacy, I hacked his social media, and I'd seen that he was messaging girls inappropriately. I confronted him about it, he lied. His family member then messaged me and said, hey, did you know that he had hickeys on his neck? And I'm like, no, so then I called him. It ended up being an argument, but he continued to lie, but then he was, well, it doesn't matter because we weren't together anyways. How do you know that they actually hooked up and when? Because he wasn't acting like himself. He was very different. I did see the hickeys on his neck, and then he did confess of sleeping with the girl two times. Hmm. Let me see the messages. You write, I like your vibe. Thank you. Would you be down to go to a movie with me tonight? You wrote that, sir? It was either I wrote it or it was brought to my attention brought to your attention. Because there were times when I let my siblings play with my phone. Your siblings would get your phone and ask other people out on dates on your behalf? One sibling in particular, he was trying to do me a favor because of the things that I was going through at that time. Should I get my septum pierced? Never been a fan of it, but you make it look sexy. Your sibling wrote that? I honestly can't remember. Hmm. Okay, because this was recent. Do you have any problems with your memory? Actually, this is not trying to make an excuse, but yeah, I do. When I was a kid, I had got jumped and I had a uh, short-term memory loss. I can't remember the days of that event and at times and occasions of great emotional stress, I find that to be one of the problems with me remembering Is that things. true? Yeah, that's true, but that's why. <laughs> okay. This was somebody that you end up sleeping with. Do you remember that? Yes, Your Honor. Were the two of you on a break at the time? To my knowledge, yes, Your Honor. 
perhaps that's another area that you just don't recall. Because afterwards, when it happened, you denied it, correct? Yes, Your Honor. Hmm. What happened on Valentine's Day? You thought you were going to spend Valentine's yeah. Day together, but no. He cheated again with a different woman. What happened? Um, I went through his phone yet again because I don't trust him. Seeing the messages that he was exchanging with this woman, the girl messaged him like this meme of these two dogs cuddling together. And I asked him, like, yo, like, are you messing with this girl? Are you sleeping with this girl? He goes, no. Of course, I don't believe him. So that's when I messaged a girl on his phone pretending to be him, saying, like, hey, let's meet up at this art event. I didn't know what she looked like. Uh, we went there. That's when she approached me, introduced herself. So I went outside and I told AJ to go get her so we can have our conversation. And I straight up asked her, I was like, are you sleeping with him? And she goes, no, we're not. Well, why don't you ask him? And I'm like, well, I did, he lied. Can you just tell me? And that's when she said, yes, it happened a couple of weeks ago. Like, it was a long time. Mm -hmm. And then that's when she started telling me, like, oh, well, he's a bum, you shouldn't be with him. Like, why are you with him? Your Honor, she's telling part of the story. We're no longer interacting. We're no longer talking, doing mm -hmm. that, what we were doing. Is that why you were sleeping on the couch? We were sleeping on the couch because of the message that she sent him, and I pressed him about it, and he that, lied about it, and so I'm like, I'm That wasn't the only reason, Your Honor. Mm -hmm. She was tacking on past experiences and feelings at that time for what she was feeling mm -hmm. for what was inappropriate messages. There was no action or intent at that time. Again, I was in my emotional mind. I felt as if I'm going to be typecasted and played as this criminal, then I'm going to go down this path. I felt as if her first steps of moving to the couch was her trying to tell me in a subtle way she's getting ready to move out. When you say inappropriate messages, who were the messages from? From her and to, you? It, to me. And it was those memes like... And you dialogue. were responding. You were engaged in a dialogue. I was. So I was, was indulging the ways. dialogue. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. Those girls call you up, you gave them sex, we didn't have sex. But Your excuses were, well, I have rheumatoid arthritis. I was diagnosed with this when I was 12. It goes through flare-ups and remission. You were in wow. remission when these things happen with these other women. Unfortunately so. If you can have sex with those girls, you can have sex with me. We're talking about two different women. Yes, yeah. in the last two years. But then the two of you decide to get engaged yes. a year ago. Yes. How did you get past that and decide to propose? I was seeking expectational closure, and the only thing I was getting in response felt like to me was an emotional rapid fire back and forth. I don't know what parties. expectational closure is. It's like where I'm saying something and I expect the result to be what it is, and it's not the case. She was telling me how she felt, and I was assuming after she told me how she felt that was the end of the issue. Because mm -hmm. I was assuming that this issue was... Or let's talk about the fact that we were intimate. Those girls call you up, you gave them sex, we didn't have sex. But I was very vulnerable with you and communicating with you, like, hey, I feel like since you cheated with these girls, you could at least, I don't know, do something. Your excuses were, well, I have rheumatoid arthritis. But we were having sex back to back, day after day, and then there were moments when you were yourself emotional and vulnerable, and you were saying, I just can't believe you still did this, and that kind of messed with me. And I was trying to convey that to you and communicate that to you. Mm -hmm. But I understand that I can only talk about so much, I am not in your shoes. I don't understand you emotionally enough. Mister, I have to say, you talk I don't know what your communication like, is like in your home, <laughs> but today? It's been quite interesting for me to sit here and try to decipher exactly what you're saying. Because you use a lot of big words, but I have no idea what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm no philosopher, Mr. Duke, but you're gonna have to speak in lay terms when you come in this courtroom, because you lost me about five minutes ago when you exactly. said expectational like, you can't closure. Answer your question. Wow. There have been times where I try to initiate it. And yes, sometimes I'm tired, whatever. But this man mm. uses the, well, remember that time when you were tired? I'm like, yeah. Well, that's that time now. What do you think is really happening? I don't know. I try to talk to him and communicate with him. And as you can see, he talks a lot, but it makes no sense. Mm. <laughs> Has his rheumatoid arthritis really been an issue in your relationship? <sighs> Maybe a little with mm -hmm. his job and whatnot, but if you can 
have sex with those girls, you can have sex with me. Rheumatoid arthritis is an illness. I was diagnosed with this when I was 12. It goes through flare-ups and remission, which means it goes away, comes back. Two years ago, I wasn't feeling none of these joint pains and problems. You were in wow. remission when these things happened with these other women. Unfortunately so. And it flared up. It flared up from the stress and me taking on more of an active job role and more of trying to be actively engaged with my significant other. Hmm. So the two of you get engaged, mm -hmm. despite all of this that's been happening. Why did you think it's a good idea to go forward in marriage? So at the beginning, the communication was not there. And he was like flirting with girls, social media. That was okay with me. It's I... just recently was more of a So physical... even 11 years ago, you're saying that's what was happening? Yes. Because we were each other's first. Like, we took each other's virginities. I don't want to use that as an excuse, like, oh, well, I'm curious. I want to go out and do yeah, things. It wasn't just first but relationship. Yeah. It was a lot of firsts. We broke a lot of generational curses, along with being together, working through our problems, and being vulnerable mm -hmm. that influenced our relationship. Mm -hmm. But sometimes I feel like she doesn't acknowledge all those for her own priority, what she feels is more important. Do you understand that this cat is his emotional support animal and it's important to him? I coddle him and I cuddle him like that. That's my little furry little child. You see how he was cuddling him? That's what I want for intimacy. So you feel like the cat is getting more love and affection than you are? If you'd like your case to be heard on Divorce Court, call us toll-free 1-877-311-2222 or log on to our website at divorcecourt.com. Miss the show? Watch full episodes on our streaming platforms and follow us on social media for exclusive content. Now you're planning this wedding, yes. but you said you feel that you're the only one that actually cares about it. Why do you yeah. say that? because I've been the one reaching out, contacting venues, vendors, and for example, to save the date, I designed that. I simply asked him like, for his input, he puts it all on me. For example, hey babe, can you pick out, out of these two songs which one you like? Well, I like them both. That's not answering my question. It's like, I feel like this is more of my wedding instead of our wedding. When you pick songs that only you know the lyrics to, I can only give so much of an opinion. Pick. When you ask about me putting effort in, I not only changed my work schedule, I make sure I took care of my social life to incorporate my romantic life and my career life. I wanted to prioritize our wedding and our relationship first. So it kind of hurts when you're saying that I'm not trying to take interest in this wedding when I divert 80 to 90% of any money that I get Okay, go straight well, to the wedding. With the well, money. Let me ask you something. The, the two of you have been together a long time. Mm -hmm. You've been engaged for a year already. Why are you waiting so long to get married? Money. We, well, yes, money we're saving, yes. Mm -hmm. And we have a lot of people coming out of town, so just giving them enough time to save up for tickets. And looking at these text messages, you know how I know this is you writing this? Mm -hmm. Because you opened the text message with Grand Rising Beautiful. Mm -hmm. I know Mr. Duke wrote that. Mm. <laughs> mm. In Sorry. my defense, Your Honor, I don't speak in that vernacular anymore. Grand Rising. <laughs> yeah, that is you. You. I, we've I, talked I, about it, that's why. Tell me about the cat, Miss True. All right, so I really can't stand this cat. But <laughs> this is his ESA animal. I don't like him because he peed on my $200 uh, cushion that I couldn't get the smell out of. Hmm. And he, he peed in my dirty laundry. So I'm like, two strikes you out, you gotta go. Like, I... What is ESA? Emotional support animal? Yes, ma'am. I have mm -hmm. the paperwork and documentation and certification for it. And how long have you had the cat? <sighs> Almost a year now. It's been so over do you year. understand that this cat is his emotional support animal and it's important to him? What's the cat's name? Ansem. Handsome, handsome little black cat. She can't stand but him, but yes, I, I coddle him and I cuddle him like that. That's my little furry little child. Mm -hmm. he, he, he accepts it, he holds it, he doesn't fight me, he doesn't bite me or anything. And then when he's ready to go, he'll just tap me on the shoulder real quick and he'll just slink off like a little snake. But Your Honor, you see how he was cuddling him? That's what I want for intimacy. Your Honor, she's not <laughs> being specific on the time or date when she wants that because there are times and moments when she comes home and I wish to give her that. No. You fall asleep. And then you, but your first so go-to is I'm too heavy issue. or you're getting hot that's rather than the... I don't want it. So you feel like the cat is getting more love and affection than you are? Somewhat, but I still don't want that cat there. Like, but it's wow. just the it's like, emotional I just support can't. cat. So it you're is. saying he should get rid of it? I would that's like what she's for saying, him Your Honor. to. I know that sounds really mean, but <sighs> yes. I don't think the cat's gonna go anywhere. And it sounds mm -hmm. like Mr. Duke may need Ansem. I, 
I feel like during this turmoil with the cheating back to back, yes, but now, no. Have you moved past what happened and do you trust him now? I'm coping with moving past it because it was back to back. Mm -hmm. I was still trying to get over the first time he cheated and it happened a year later. And I know your perspective is you don't really consider it to be cheating because you weren't sure of the future of your relationship. No, Your Honor. My entire life has been based off of that whole premise. My foster mom who raised me died while I was in college. She was a person I went to for all my emotional support. I'm sorry to my hear that. My biological mom was unable to fill that role, which I tried to push her in. Mm -hmm. Because of that, I acted out mm -hmm. emotionally. I and feel I... like that's baloney. You said that happened when you were in college. Yes. And I'm sorry to hear that. But it's been a long time, Mr. Duke. And I understand that you have your reasons for what happened. But what you said earlier in the case, I think, was key. And that is, even when you have your reasons, even when you make those choices, there are consequences for them. Because that's what happens in life. Yes. And that's how you end up here. Very concerned about the two of you planning this wedding and getting married next year. That's very good. concerned. Because I don't see the foundation that needs to be in place before two people are ready to take the next step and make the lifelong commitment to marriage. The decision to get married should not be about marrying somebody's potential. You marry the reality of who they are and you know. Mm. Unlike so many other couples, you're fortunate because you know, you take your life experiences and you learn from them. Mm -hmm. It's all about life experience. I do not see two people who are excited and happy and thrilled and energized about moving forward into marriage next year. I see some people who think it's been a long time, so this is probably the next progression in our relationship is to get married. I always say, when you build your house, if you build it on sand, the problem is what happens when a storm comes? It sinks. It doesn't withstand the storm. Mm. So when you go in, you want to build on a solid foundation, so you have some work to do. The trust, lost in buckets, earned in drops. So you've got to do what you need to do to earn the trust. It doesn't come from your words, it comes from your actions. I agree. The two of you have to get on the same page about what you want in life. Your finances, how you want to live, what's acceptable in your household, how you want to communicate, the honesty, the truth, how you want to be loved, what you need to be loved. You talked about the intimacy and how it's not there. You got things to work on. These things should be fixed before you go into marriage because marriage does not fix them. And you are making a mistake if you think that by getting married, somehow it's going to fix all your problems. Mm. It's not going to happen. This is the time to do the work now. I don't care if the invitations have been mailed. I don't care if you picked out the DJ. Mm. You put the brakes on it until you are ready to really move forward and be confident about the lifelong decision you say you're making. I wish the two of you well. Good luck. The best advice she gave me is um, definitely having to fix the relationship. Like, you can't get married without doing the work. Like, we still got a lot of work to do. It can be lost in buckets, but gained back in drops, and that's trust. And I feel the only way I can utilize that advice I got from Judge Faith is just by my actions alone. But I, I do appreciate getting that validation and that closure from it. A lot of times, we both second guess each other but we can't do that no more. We gotta move as a team. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I definitely would like to do some therapy or something so we both can talk. I think we gotta work on it. Yeah, definitely. We can always work on ourselves, work on a relationship.